Hey, hello, welcome. It's August. <laughs> it's our August Lightroom Live event. Uh, August, the season of weddings. I guess not. <laughs> really. uh, but now, maybe now that maybe it starts back up in the fall, doesn't it? So at least it does around here. Um, so our our topic this month, uh, wedding workflows, and we're super excited to have a fellow fo photo focus contributor, author, all around amazing photographer, Lisa Robinson. Lisa, how are you? Hey there, I'm great. How are you guys? Good. Thanks for joining Good. us. Thanks and, for having me. And Levi, back from his Western tour yes. of the eclipse at the ranch. Yes, I got to shoot the eclipse in the Tetons. It was, it was incredible. <laughs> I mean, so my little brother was in was was in Salt Lake. Oh, he awesome. happened to be working that day, but he said, "Well, I mean, it's 96 percent here. Uh, it, like, why would I travel?" Right. It is nothing like, like 99.9% .9 is not the same as 100%. It was really incredible. Yeah. It was kind of like a full moon, but it was absolutely nothing like a full moon. Yeah. Did you see stars come out? The stars were out. The birds were going crazy. Um, the, it was like, so, so the sky goes dark. And then it was, it was 1130, so the sun was quite high. And down to about this high on the horizon it's dark sky and then at the horizon all the way around it looks like sunrise and it's this really warm light and overhead this, the moon is or the the sun and moon are this really blue light and it was, it was like a 360 degree sunrise wow. and it was just incredible i mean the the quality of light was was remarkable it was really sharp shadows like you have during a, a bright full moon but not that deep contrast because there was plenty of light coming in from the horizons. Um, it was, it was just, it was really, really incredible. And, and it, I mean, it was, it was dark and you look up and there's this guy and uh, it was, it was did, amazing. Did, uh, did anyone scream or cry? Cause I heard that happen. So. Um, I was, I was with two other guys. We hugged each other. We didn't even hug each other, but uh, we, I, there were, so, in Teton Valley, I mean, there were thousands and thousands of people who came up here to view it, and all around us, we were up on this on this ridge, in the mountain a ways. But all around us, we could hear people just suddenly erupt, cheering, and oh, wow. screaming, and shouting, and clapping. Yeah. It was it was pretty cool. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty neat. Um, so yes, I'm back from that and spent a week in Montana, and uh, decided to pull out the adventure hat <laughs> for today while I'm at it. But awesome. Yeah. So Lisa, where are where are you in the world? I am in the gorgeous town of Silverthorne, Colorado right now. Oh, yeah, nice. Which is one of my favorite places. Um, Absolutely. out here doing a bunch of weddings because it is definitely higher in the mountains right now. It's yeah. gorgeous yeah. weather. The leaves are just about to turn. It's perfect. Oh great. How's the air quality yeah. for you? I got home last night and I can smell thick atmosphere with forest fires out here how's it how's it for you oh it's great it's awesome yeah right on yeah cool i'm gonna be in colorado I springs in a few weeks Oregon, there is right on well rob i'll have to send uh send my dad your way and you guys yeah that's shoot. right uh, yeah. yeah back to doing that same i've thing. got a shoot down there in mid-september so. oh do you yeah, well, right that's on. Right. I do. well yeah if you need a yeah. place to stay or something i'll volunteer at my parents house <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right i forgot about that <laughs> Cool. All right. So let's talk wedding workflows, which is why we're all here. So um, before we do, uh, we do have a couple uh, giveaways uh, from Perfectly Clear to give away to viewers at the end of our uh, hour. The way you get entered in that is to go over to our the YouTube live streaming page. If you're on the Photo Focus page, watching the embed, just click on over to YouTube. There's a little comment pop out on the side there. Just Throw in a comment, throw in a question. Love the questions. We've got lots of questions uh, we can handle on anything related to weddings. Certainly Lightroom related, but there's a lot more. As Lisa said just minutes ago, there's a lot more to weddings than just Lightroom. That's so, true. If only I figure. could just stay in Lightroom for the rest of my life, that would be great. Yeah. Yes. Equivalent to only having covered data in the dark room. But <laughs> such is not the case. There's real life outside of 
whatever in processing yeah. photos. Well, with so, Lightroom Mobile, you could you could now shoot raw on your phone and stay in Lightroom and use your your phone to photograph the wedding. So you can just stay in that room. Beautiful problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> problem solved. So, so Lisa, just to give people an idea how how many weddings are you kind of doing these days? Usually three years, I've shot between 30 and 35 weddings a year, um, which is a little crazy. <laughs> that's, a lot of, that's a lot of weekends, yeah. I would like to keep it, I feel like my comfort zone's more in the 25 range, give or take a few. Um, that'll last for a little bit more so That's my sweet spot of where I want to be with that. Um, but to say no, you know, you get these weddings and their people are wonderful and the locations are amazing and you're like, well, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> so um, when you're really bogged down like that, you kind of come up with ways that make your life a lot easier because you don't have time um, in, your, in your, your workflow. Yeah, and, and Rob, I, I talked Lisa into letting me shoot a wedding with her one time, which was, oh, wow. was really enjoyable. Yeah, it was really <laughs> fun. And she, she did. She had things just ironed out to run so smoothly, and, and she knew where everything was going. She knew what kind of pictures she wanted made, and she knew how to handle having two second shooters on site. Okay, was, so you were like the third shooter? I was like the third shooter. I was like the, the please let me come along and see how to <laughs> Cool. That's, I like I, when those people come along. I think it's fun. Yeah, it would be fun. I, I'm too nervous. I mean, I've gone to weddings as guests, and I've not been one of those people like holding up an iPad or anything like that. But Thank you know, <laughs> but it just kind of scares I really me. Had to grab, uh, right before the bride's coming down the aisle, they got up with their iPad, stood in the middle of the aisle, right in front of me, and was trying to film or take pictures, I don't know what, but yeah. I ran up and I was like, you need to sit down now. <laughs> right. Lisa doesn't mess around with this <laughs> And I look back at the groom, because it was like a little harsh, you. <laughs> you gave me the thumbs up, so. Yeah, I, I just don't understand. I mean, they people are there because they love these couples, and they know these couples have paid a lot of money for a professional to handle this. I don't know why they think their iPad photo is going to be better than what I'm going to give the couple. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. If people, I guess they don't, they're not really being rational in those moments. It's, it's, well, and so no. here's a workflow question about that, Lisa. Have you, have you attended weddings or, or suggested yeah. for your couples the, the check basket at the door? You know, check your iPhone here, that kind of thing. Have you, have you done that kind of thing? You can try. You Lots can try. of people yeah. don't comply. Um, case in point, I was at a wedding on Friday at a gorgeous ranch here in Colorado. Um, the minister even, and before everything started, he's like, please put your phones away, put them on airplane, don't have them out. A couple really wants you to be present with them in this moment. Well, that didn't help all the people that arrived late because there's a traffic jam on the highway. So there were about oh, no. 20 to 30 people who the message. Those were, of course, the people who had their iPads out, standing up, were kind of moving around, trying to get pictures. So you can try, but ultimately, it's, it's like you said, people aren't necessarily thinking yeah. straight. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's amazing how many people, you know, you go to something like that that's a pretty important event, and you watch it through your phone <laughs> because the people are so busy, you know, filming, yeah. recording, whatever. Yeah, and, and there's like, they're putting this thing in front of them and the family member or friend or whoever that they're there to uh, right. experience this. With. I, I had the experience of, I, I got to go to my first concert the other day with Lisa and her also husband with and with, with Rich. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we went to this concert at, at Wolf Trap National Park and most of the crowd experienced the entire thing through their phones because yeah. they were recording it yeah. and it boggled my mind. Yeah. They're never going to go back and, and look at that. You yeah, know, you're never going to watch that. Right. It's not going to compare to just being there. So. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Be there. <clears throat> so F8 and be there. Wait, no. Yeah. No, that's your job. <laughs> so you're, you're doing up, up, oh, be up. 1.8 and be there. <laughs> <laughs> Upwards of 30 weddings uh, a year. 
And that means yes. it's a lot of pictures. Yes. I'm guessing. Uh, so we were talking about this a little bit earlier, and maybe this can kind of get us started in a, a little bit of a Lightroom frame. So most people that I deal with uh, as Lightroom on Lightroom help desk, the people getting started with Lightroom are not professional wedding photographers. They're people who just have, you know, a camera and they got Lightroom and they're trying to figure stuff out. And my advice, my advice to them always is, uh, whether sh when they ask, should I have more than one catalog, is just stick with one. Have all your photos in one catalog. Doesn't keep your life simple for lots of reasons, and and, and that's true. But there are exceptions to that, and and so you, I think, I do something different. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do? Yeah. Um, so I I have a slight hybrid to those. Um, for each client. I give them each their own catalog. Um, do you want me to screen share that? Sure. Or so start screen sharing my there there here. <laughs> So typically what I will do, I have everything on my trusty Drobo, by the way, which is awesome. Um, and then I have all of my clients here going in alphabetical order, obviously, because that's how everything goes. Um, for me, <laughs> this, this makes more sense in a lot of ways um, for um, organizing my clients because I have so many that it's at a certain point, if they were all in one catalog, I'm going to be spanning so many drives. I've run out of storage, and then half the catalog is going to be online when the other half isn't going to be online, and it's just going to be kind of hard to access all of those things at the time. So I keep them on there that way when my 13 months, because I keep clients photos for 13 months past the wedding. Um, and after that, if they want me to keep them, it's an archiving fee. Um, oh. Do you really delete 13 them? months. Do you really get rid of them? Just offload them to a separate place. They go oh, okay. onto a hard drive that's stored and I don't access it and it's just right. off. Um, usually in storage in an off-site location just in case my house were to burn down. Um, <laughs> they're there. I keep everything though. But the clients are inactive after 13 months. Past. Um, and that's because I give, I deliver photos about four weeks out. So I give them a full year of having access to their photos essentially. Um, and yeah, that allows me to manage my hard drives a little bit better by having each of them in separate catalogs and then pulling them off as, as I need to. Yeah. Um, but then the opposite to that is that I do carry a, uh, a separate library that I'll go back to screen sharing again. Um, this is a library that I use for all of my favorites. So as I'm photographing a wedding or as I'm processing a wedding, I'm marking all of my images for as favorites. These are going to be the images I'm going to do blog posts off of. These are going to be the image I'm going to pull for Instagram. And these I organize by year, I organize by season, um, and then by client. So that way I can easily go in there and find them if I'm, or if I'm doing a post where a publisher is looking for fall images, I can be like, oh wait, yeah, I did, you know, an awesome fall shoot, you know, back in 2016. Um, here, let me get to those images really quickly. Um, and this library, um, funnily enough, I keep on, um, I could keep it on Lightroom Mobile or I can, um, what I tend to do is I keep it on my um, Dropbox. That way I can also access it, download um, images from there and post to Instagram when I need or want to. Um, Nice. Okay. Good for that. Yeah, that was that was my question for you. Is how do you how do you consolidate and find all your best pictures? That's that's what drives me nuts about people yeah. having multiple catalogs. Is that then you can't you have to open a catalog and be like, oh, this is this is 2017. Oh wait, it wasn't actually in 2017. Right. It was 2015 when it we went to the Tetons. Yeah. Here it is in 2015. That's oh, but then I, in 2016. It's, like, it's let, me, my last, let me open this other catalog. Yeah, it's my last step in my workflow after I deliver images. Um, I export and put it onto my proofing site. My next round is then I export my favorites and put it. It's a obligatory step that I have to do. That it's one. like a portfolio catalog. Yeah, it's a portfolio catalog. So that's cool. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's I'm not the worried about finding it in the archives anywhere. 
Right. Well, that's the that's the that's the rub. Is that if you have one catalog, then you know where to go to find everything. If you don't, then you need some other organizational structure that's outside of Lightroom. And maybe it's just all in your head, but that you know, for me, it's not it's not really smart. <laughs> but for other people, they yeah. do that. But but you need to have some kind of like you had. You have your folder system now. Is every catalog for that wedding stored in that folder too? So it's the catalog and the photos all in that same folder? Um, in the same folder as what? So like if you had a, photo, a folder oh, for fine. my wedding, say, um, in that folder, is that where the catalog lives and the photos? Yes. So here, I'll, I'll uh, bring up my... My little screen. And those are purely alphabetical. Those aren't by year at all. No, they're purely alphabetical. Um, I, I've been yeah. thinking about going back and doing those by year too, but then I, I archive those off as well. So, um, so when I well, and you've got your catalog that you've got your your catalog catalog, right? <laughs> your catalog organization catalog. catalog that tells you so in, exactly, and that one will tell you what year it was really quickly. So in here, um, like let's look here, in Jenna. Um, so in here, I'll have my catalog. Here's my catalog with my previews and all, that, all the little other files that um, they create. Then I have a folder underneath the client's name, which is just all the raws. Okay. Then I also have a folder of my favorites from that wedding. Okay. So you um, export JPEGs out. Export JPEGs out. And then that way, I can copy this folder up into my Dropbox, oh, so, okay. um, into my favorites catalog. Um, so when somebody books you and you go shoot engagements, th this is where you come first. You create a you create a folder for their name. Yep. And then you you create an engagement folder, and then yep. you create a. And this is this is where you work from whenever you reference their. Their yep. events. So basically, I import the raw folders here. So I have engagement raws and wedding raws, and then so I'll import the photos into the Finder, and then I come over here and into folders and then I'll add that folder. I'll just okay. navigate to it in my finder and add it in. Um, I find that that nice. method is a little bit faster than just going into Lightroom and saying import down here. Um, mm. Ultimately yeah. they both complete the same function. Sure. Um, I just find it faster if it's already imported into your finder you just add the folder through the folders tab and then I've got my organization here. Um, my problem with the multiples in one catalog is I have all of these categories. I tend to edit in sections by what part of the day it was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And when you've got a ton of different weddings and then you've got a ton of different collections and all this stuff, it, it's weird because in folders, you can't reorder what order the photos are in. Yeah. But in here, I can, which is sometimes more important to me because sometimes I'll take things out of context. Mm -hmm. Um, or out of order and timeline, and then when I export those photos, I want those to be in order for the client, just as a visual um, diary of what's happened. Okay. So I always want to work out of collections. Collections, because smart collections won't let me <laughs> order right. either. So right. I work out of collections um, in order to be able to do stuff like that. Um, like here, trying to put all the stuff of the reception into one area um, wow. for That's them. That's a great idea. Now, um, do you rename the photos so that they're in sequence? I do. So, yeah. I do. So you can see in here when I give them their final JPEGs, they have them organized by category, and then it's uh, all in that order. That's wise. I've I've had clients say, "Well, I'm I'm looking at number two zero four, but then the next one is." Two seven two. Where's all the ones in between there? Right. Yeah, you don't want them <laughs> in there. Like, oh, you don't want those. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Had, the, had the lens cap on that whole time. Sorry. <laughs> you don't want them to know. You're like, oh, I missed those ten. Like, yeah. yeah that one. You know. That's smart. Yeah. No. Plus, it it helps them. I, I've heard so many times, like, of photographers that just throw everything up there, and people are super overwhelmed because even. Right. You know, you'll have hundreds and hundreds. I deliver usually somewhere between 600 and 800 images to a client, and that's a lot to go through. So it, if they can go yes. to that section, it's so much easier. Right. Absolutely. So you're, you're making it but more easy to digest for your client. Yeah. 
which has got to be better for you in the long term too, right? Because if they just get overwhelmed and go, "Die, just give me four, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, it's also feeds into um, selling photos and stuff afterward. Yeah. Um, For a long time, aren't so hard on your calling because you think, oh, well, what if they like this version better than that, that version? And you're afraid to let your photographer's inner voice kind of really speak. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed that the more assertive I get about saying, no, this is what you're getting. Like you get these two of this, you get that one of that rather than having 10 versions of the similar thing. Um, else. Because if the clients have way too many options to choose from, it becomes analysis paralysis. They have yeah. no idea which one to pick. And so they don't pick any. Right. Yeah. Now that makes, that makes really good sense. Huh. Okay. So the more succinct you can be, the better. Um, I wrote an article for Photo Focus a while back um, called, uh, what did I, um, Five Tips for Improving Your Culling Skills. Oh, um, I think it was back in 2014, but it's in the photofocus.com archives. Um, and it's a great article to kind of reinforce that theory that, you know, you, how to cull down easier, how to make it faster and Oh, yeah. Excellent. Froze for a second. Um, I think I yeah, froze, froze right at the end. How to make it faster and and what? Oh, did you, it click you're, out? You're, you froze. Yeah, it yeah, just it froze, froze up. Up. Oh, sorry. Um, just how to make it faster and easier oh, process yeah. of calling because sometimes people just like clients we get into analysis paralysis. We can do that as well because we're so close to our work. Yes. Um, right. So there are some tips in there for how to be a little more impartial when um, going through and calling and making that process a lot faster. So, Lisa, do you, okay, yep. Oh, okay. Do, do you ever convert to DNG? I don't. In Lightroom? No. Nope, I don't. Okay. Well, I would say, you know, it, it seems like efficiency, speed is kind of a, a primary factor for you. So converting to DNG seems like it might be something that would slow things down. Um, but you could do it on the, on the archive end, if that you'd have to leave them sense. cooking, yeah, you'd have to let them let them cook for a while. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like the whole smart preview thing. It takes a little while. And yeah, I mean, so if I were to smart I mean, previews have their place, but yeah, I mean, I if it, if, it, if, it, if it was an issue in it for you, and it's like one of these things you got to weigh out. But if so, the be, one of the benefits of DNG is that it's usually maybe ten to fifteen percent or more smaller in file size. So at the end of 13 months, if you took a wedding, right inside of Lightroom, you could select all those photos, all the raw photos anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, under the library menu is convert to DNG mm -hmm. and just let it run, you know, whenever. Yeah. Uh, it won't take that long. And then you'll have a much smaller footprint when you archive that over. So True. if that I matters, also, I don't know. When I archive over, I don't archive any of my rejected photos. I so that right there takes my libraries down from yeah. being however many gigs I shot that are in 64 to 100 some gigs. Um, <laughs> takes it down to like eight <laughs> so, um, after I call out everything. So that, that's a big help on the whole storage thing as well. And just so much less to, to deal with. You, you so, probably talked about this. Oh, go ahead, Rob. No, go ahead. No, no. You've got, I got questions. You got questions. Go. Well, you, you probably talked about this in your article on PhotoFocus, five ways to speed up your culling. Are, are, but are you, are you just doing – you're not rating all your pictures one through five? Or are you – I mean, when you, when you show up and you go through your pictures the first time, you just hit one star? Like, I kind of um, like, honestly, this, one, like this one. Honestly, I'm just hitting X. I'm rejecting. You're, you're, you, you destroy first. Get it out of there. Screw it. Yeah. You're like – Crap, Get it out. crap, Don't. crap, crap. When because awesome. I, I go through on that first pass and I give myself a second to look at it, your instincts yeah. are, are right. If it's right. if you're like, eh, I don't know, I can make something. No, right. Don't. So in, in that in that good. in that split second, you're checking focus, exposure, expression. Mostly, I am going on exposure and focus and general composition. Um, I don't do the expression fine-tuning until my second round. Okay. Um, 
So you'll have four of the same picture that haven't Because the first round, it should be lightning, the obvious going from there. Gotcha. Um, and the only time I use the rating system um, is when I'm rating my favorites that I want to use for social media mm. and things that are going to go onto my favorites folder. So Otherwise, I leave them unrated. X so just to, rated and yeah. flags, do you use flags? The, the I don't use flags. So no. That, it's just whatever's left is what they just getting. delete. You just go hard delete. What do you delete? I, I reject. I reject. I reject. I'll move those into a rejected folder to keep them separate um, in case I need to go back to them before I delete them. But um, no, I just move them into that rejected folder and then I'm left with my, you know, probably around 800. And then as I'm editing um, through, I do. I'm just checking for expressions, like you were saying there, um, Levi. Um, and uh, sometimes as I'm going through editing, I, I'll find one that I missed. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, get that one out. That was, I don't know how that made that through. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Okay, and so, so then after you've, after you've looked at the expressions mm -hmm. and you've decided this is the keeper, do the other three get rejected? Depends on how many. If it's three, yes, I would maybe move that down to only having one or two. Um, I don't like having um, more than three of a similar scene, right? Because uh, that gets back to that analysis paralysis thing, and then yeah, it, it's when you're so your finished catalog has that, no stars, no flags, <laughs> no colors, rejected flags. Oh, these rejected uh, no, flags. Those don't count. Those have been it, moved. Those okay. Are okay. Right. Those so are so the stars I use for uh, my five star images, I put for my um, my favorites catalog, so I know those are those. Those are gonna be my blogs and my things. And then I use colors for. And you're just doing that because it's a smart collection, is that right? It's like not. You're, a smart you're, you're pressing five, and then that automatically goes. You just into your sort smart by collection. stars, and then grab, and then export. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, I use colors when I'm shooting with a second shooter. I color code which ones are mine and which ones are my um, oh. second shooters, just so okay. I can easily um, go through and either find that for them, because I do let my second shooters use photos um, for them. I mean, I got started by letting me use images for a portfolio, so. Um, and you're probably not using those for portfolio. No, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, like, second shooter images will make it onto a blog post and things like that, but they're typically not going to make it onto a portfolio. Or your, um, your, your Instagram. Portfolio piece, or an Instagram. Your, right, yeah. 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 I have some yeah. amazing second shooters that do some awesome stuff, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll certainly I'll use it if it's good. Yeah. That's the whole point of hiring somebody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So <laughs> why hire somebody if you're just never going to use any of their stuff? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I like it. You suck, but I like it. So I'm going to keep telling you good that. <laughs> that's something that, that really stood um, out to me about you, Lisa, is that you hire very talented people. You don't, you don't, hire um, people looking for experience necessarily you're you're hiring skilled photographers as your second shooter yeah i advertise to my clients on. that my second shooters are all primary photographers in their own right um paying for somebody to learn right. um so if somebody wants to learn they're you know they can talk to me about coming along as a third shooter or just coming along calling bags and experience and stuff like that. And I tell them, look, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to focus on. If you get something, great. If you don't, it's no sweat. Hmm. Wanting to learn as, as bonus. Um, and often, you know, maybe there's like a dozen pictures that they get that I'll throw yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but they're by no means um, counted on for anything. And they're also not a charge to the client. Mm -hmm. So. Can I, yeah. can I ask you? Uh, can I third shoot your wedding? I like that. Yeah, I'll be the fourth. And I'm just going to like yes. hang out with my phone. Um, and, and we'll talk into our cups. At least it's on the <laughs> <laughs> I thought about getting videos. Honestly, I have. It would be really helpful. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I have, I have an import question. We were talking about this a little before we went on air about how you import and uh -huh. um, maybe talk a little bit about just your process and reason for that. And, um, and then when you do bring it into Lightroom, like what? Any settings or things that you do to speed speed things up? Um, really, my import process is very simple. Um, sh I go straight through the Finder of my um, iMac or laptop or whatever it is. Um, I create a folder on my Drobo, 
with the client's names and then I put a folder for their raws, throw them in there. And then in Lightroom, um, I guess I'll do that again right here. Um, oh, here, I'll open the one that uh, Levi shot with me. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so do you throw the do you throw the second shooter images in that same folder at once too? And yep, just bring I throw them all in because you can sort by um, camera serial number mm -hmm. or model number. Depending and, if you're if you're not shooting with the same cameras that she is, is that yeah, right? you, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here, Le Levi's green here because he oh, was right second on. shooter. Okay. Um, he's a green. I, he's a green horn for sure. Green Mine are always sure. blue. <laughs> Uh, mine are blue. Just I come from a horse background, so blue ribbon is first, and red ribbon is second. <laughs> there you go. First green shooter, is, second and shooter. Green is the color of the grass that the horse green is for sure. Third shooter, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, Participation trophy. So yeah, I've got all these folders or photos here. Um, got the raw folder imported. Um, when I import, it's all coming in as raws. I wait until everything's in in order to sort it uh, because I can go up here to camera serial number and it'll show me all the serial numbers of the cameras that were okay, okay. working for me and I'll know exactly who shot what. So then I just select all and, um, you know, set the color label. Okay. I think I that. only brought one camera to that and you guys clearly had two each there. That's good. Oh. Well, yeah, you need two. Um, I was thinking you could um, that red room, man. Look at that. Thing. Yeah, God, that red room is red awful. Red <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look I at was, these rods. <laughs> I was thinking that you could, um, if you were doing it separately, you could include a color label in a metadata preset. So, like when you're bringing in Ooh. Levi's, you could have Levi's metadata template color green uh -huh. right in there, and then you just apply that right. You know. Yeah, you, you well, you would just do second shooter as your preset. And third yeah. shooter is your preset, and then they would be color coded as they came in. Yeah, but that's a good idea. You're throwing them all in in one big folder. That's not going to help you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so here's all the stuff Levi shot. Huh. All right. Uh -huh. Look at that. Um, <laughs> that I kept. That you kept. That I kept. I kept 105. You did pretty good, Levi. You got like 10 percent of the uh, yeah. of the hole here. So, <laughs> job, five pictures. Wow, better than twelve. She's she's she prepared this beforehand. <laughs> minute, that picture. Of, did you even keep the one of you? And uh, there's a good one of you with the couple in there at the uh, end yeah, of the reception. I kept that um, any pictures, silly pictures and stuff like that that I take with clients, I immediately get rid of out of the catalog and yeah. just put them to a separate place. Of um, it's actually my favorite catalog of any photos of Lisa shooting. Um, which are always good to have for um, little just promo things. Well, like, and yeah, like Instagram, yeah. like, hey. Yeah. Right. And when I need to make a banner for Photo Focus about you coming on the show, I use those then. Yeah. But um, I keep them out of that catalog for the, the couple just because it doesn't really fit into any one category. Mm -hmm. so since it doesn't fit nice and neat, I, I just move it somewhere else. Um, another import question for you. So you're, the photos are already where you want them. Mm -hmm. You're not copying or moving them. So you use the add option on the import yes. screen. Do you render previews one-to-one uh, -one or regular previews or doing anything with that? I just do regular previews. I don't use smart previews unless I know I'm going to be on a mobile workflow um, and away from my desk and, and need to do without being attached. Um, just smart previews take time and space to render. And if I don't need them, I'm, I'm not going to just automatically do them. Have um, you ever done that? Have you ever culled or, or sorted or anything on a mobile device? Has that been useful? I've not done it on a phone. I find it's just too small. It's uncomfortable for me to work on. Um, so the smallest I'll do is, is on my laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Ten, not 10 inch, 12 inch now. Yeah. Do you ever use, when you're doing that cull, do you use Lightroom's auto advance function so that when you hit that reject flag, it yes. just goes to the next one? Yes. That's hugely helpful. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, you can really go through stuff really quickly. Um, so if you get to, mm -hmm. you know, photo and you reject, it goes to the next one and, and you're going to keep it, how do you advance it to the next? I just arrow. Arrow, okay. I have my, my right finger on the, the arrow and my left finger on the X and I just 
toggle back and maybe more lip yeah it's almost like a little musical rhythm thing there yeah, yeah. Um, notice that or note that before I do my call I do the separating into those categories yeah um, so I'm not calling everything all at once I'm oh, calling all of the pre-wedding stuff then I'm calling all of the ceremony then I'm calling all of um, you know the formal photos okay. that must um, I just find that. mentally it gives me a bit of Bit of, um, and also helps me seeing things in context because again if I shoot things out of order in the day they could be all over the place on um, the actual yeah. file numbering yeah. um, so I'll, I'll put those things into their um, respective folders oh, it makes total sense. I, plus then I, I can like be like too, right, because then you I've got an hour yeah. I'm gonna do and you know it, you, you know you chunk out whatever your time is yeah. Yeah, you oh. don't have to sit down and do a wedding. You sit down and, and separate your wedding, and then you call yeah. the ceremony, and you call and you you do these little pieces, and you could achieve yes. little things. And I, I find I work better idea. in smaller bursts. So I if like I can that. say I'm going to get all the pre-wedding stuff done this morning, and then I can move on to another task, billing or or you know client meetings or what have you, um, that I find makes me stay more sane rather than trying to do it all in one sitting in one day yeah. um, and putting it yeah. through. Um, so you said time, that reminds me. So we're about halfway through-ish, and so anyone who'd like to be entered in the perfectly clear preset uh, plug-in, sorry, giveaway, um, make sure you enter a comment or a question. We love some questions about wedding photography in general, Lightroom specifically, how they intermingle, um, any of that stuff. And um, just do that on the YouTube live page. Right? And, uh, you can get there through the photo focus link, or maybe you're watching it already. Because some people are, because Martin and Cecil, I saw. Yeah, and Sharon just popped in. Great information. Hi, Rob, hey. Lisa, and Levi. Hi, Hi. Sharon. Hi. <laughs> hey. Yeah, so just feel free to chime in and say, hey, where, you, where you're calling in from, and uh, we love that. So can I show something really quick around that uh, import thing? Um, yeah, Because I know you, oh, this sounds like you're already doing this. So do you see, do you see Lightroom up here? Yes. All right. So, so I'm in full screen mode. So if I'm doing a call, this obviously is at a wedding. This was me shooting the eclipse in New York, which was really fun. So everybody's looking up. Okay. Um, is first thing I would do is like shift tab and just like clear all the panels out of the way. Mm -hmm. Then I might hit the E key to go into loop view. And so up under the photo menu is this auto advance that I mentioned. You know that Lisa uses as well. And so with auto advance checked. If you just hit that uh, X key, it just marks that one. So I'm going to hit G just to go back. So that one that was selected first got flagged as a reject and has automatically advanced me over to the next one, right? Now, if I'm here in grid view and I want to just maybe go through it more quickly without looking in uh, at everyone, you know, in loop view, but maybe I want to check focus. If you just press and hold the Z key, it jumps you right to one to one. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I let go of the Z key, I'm right back in grid view. And then oh, I, I can didn't say, that. that's cool. Um, maybe I want to keep See, that you're one. You're so much better at explaining all these. I'm <laughs> just like, here's my process. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why I was just making, you know, that word sync yeah. is kind of what you do. Uh, I might use other keys than you do, but, you know, the, the workflow is the same. And so I might hit the P key to go and keep that one, right? This was, you know, I fired it in burst, so I've got a duplicate here, so maybe I don't need to keep that one, so I hit X for reject. Um, cute little kid, maybe I'm not sure. So if I'm on the fence and I can't decide, because this is just me shooting in the street, it's not really uh, anything for pay. Um, if I want to advance it without assigning a flag, if you hit the U key, it just it's just U is for unflag, so it doesn't change the state, but mm -hmm. it triggers the auto advance to go to the next one. And then I could hit Z to zoom in. Now, I had uh, on the import dialog, typically what I will do is up here in file handling, I'll have it set to one to one. It makes the process take a little longer in the beginning. But when I'm going through that, okay, all right, if you had 900 <laughs> images in your wedding, it would take longer. Mm -hmm. But when I hit Z, when it's done, if I hit Z, I just zoom right in. There's no loading, there's no delay. Yeah. Right, and right. so, and then you have them set to discard the one-to-one -one reviews after how long? Well, 
So I think it's, I have my set for 30 days, but what I end up doing because I'm so hard on my Lightroom because I'm always testing it and breaking it to troubleshoot for people <laughs> is I end up just taking my preview cache, the LR data file, and I just delete it like at least once a year and then just re-render all my previews over from scratch. That you're working yeah. on. Yeah. Like like the active pictures get re-rendered. Yeah. So I don't I don't idea. really worry about keeping them because I just do that uh, you know at some at some point yeah. uh, I'll, I'll do that. So uh, yeah and so that's just one to one preview. Yeah. And that way Yeah Lisa I was I was curious. I, I I noticed you had your previews stored in your folder with your catalogs and things. Is that is that purposeful? Like it's just where the previews, or it just it. it's just where they are. Yeah, it's yeah. just where Lightroom did it, so okay. I just kept it there. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to find. It's all in the same spot. I don't, I'm not in multiple places tracking something down. But the previews do corrupt, and I'm trying to figure out where that file is in, the, in order to redo it. It just it's fine. It's right where Lightroom just automatically puts it. Excellent. Uh, I got a question for you, Lisa. Yeah. Um, Cecil is asking, uh, what's your turnaround time for any given wedding? Oh, we, she's really pondering. But in times like August and September and October and November, that doesn't always happen. Um, so four weeks is, is that. And then I can kind of keep it manageable on my workflow end where in the first week after the wedding, I make sure everything's backed up and I make sure everything's imported, keyworded. Um, and called the second week I can work on doing my edit. Um, I usually do those in like 30 minute or to an hour chunks at a time. Um, like I said, cause I like to keep things manageable. I hate one oppressive, like 10 hour block of time. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then like the that. third week I can work on making sure I have all of my stuff flagged for, um, for albums, flagged for blog posts, flagged first um and prepped for output and then put up on online um and then that fourth week just kind of gives me a little buffer if it's been a crazy week um you know weeks that you shoot three weddings on a weekend and you're just swamped um that's my typical three week. weddings in one weekend oh my god yeah. i can't even imagine that happens all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. usually oh that's my god. september and october that's my life oh like, wow Holy until god. december I, i'm I don't just know. done <laughs> i don't know if i could do that once wow. other than me Wow. You can when you see your bank wow. account after that. My head is off. I don't know. I just, I've never been that motivated by financial gain to work that hard. I just don't think I could well, do it. Well, it's fun. Like, I, I love well, my, my clients are all awesome. I, I've done a really good job with my marketing somehow. Yeah. And that are very much like me. Um, so by the time we get to the wedding itself, yeah. you pals. know, they feel like yeah. friends and I'm excited for them and I'm ready to do it. And it, it's, I well, know. I think you know. I think it's like you have to have a certain personality type to be a wedding shooter, and oh, absolutely, a, a successful one at least. Um, that you have to be energized by that process, not not just be overwhelmed yeah. like me. You have to really be, you know, wow, really jazzed to, to go. And it's not to say I don't get overwhelmed and I don't have periods where I burn out, and I'm just like, man, this is like you're just slogging through. Yeah. But I mean, by and large. It, it is something that suits my personality really well, and yeah. I, I really enjoy it. And I'm, I get to go take pictures at a party every weekend. It's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 um, great. That's great. I, I've got a question for you, Lisa. Yeah. You're you're on the road right now. You drove from D.C. to Colorado. That I did. That's a long drive. It is a long <laughs> drive. It was like 28 hours. <laughs> yeah. So what does what does on the road backup look like for you? Um, actually, I, I, since I'm going to be here for so long, um, I have my Drobo with me, my, my normal setup and everything. The only thing different is I'm not, well, I'm not working on a desktop. I'm working on a laptop. Yeah. I mean, you're bringing something half the size of a basketball. So that, oh, yeah. That's and it's heavy as I'll get out, but it, right. I mean, it's what I feel most secure. Well, um, I can make sure that everything's on there. And then I also make sure everything's back, um, backed up to a cloud as well. So if something happened to any of those items on the road, I've got the cloud. Yeah. Right on. So yeah. how about, how about uh, switching over to some processing types of stuff? So do you do all your processing Lightroom or do you use third party software plugins, Lightroom. Photoshop? I don't do a whole lot of tinkering. Um, 
Photoshop I will use for retouching blemishes and things. Just I know Lightroom's got a clone tool, whatever. It sucks. I'm sorry, Lightroom. I'm sorry, Adobe. It doesn't. <laughs> it it's, sucks. <laughs> it, it's for sensor spots. That's about that's what it's for. It, it works for like really obvious things, it's not just like smack in the middle of the cheek. It it doesn't work. So I'll right. I'll go into Lightroom for that. Or if there's a little liquify action I need to help somebody out with. Yeah. Um, usually because I use like my 16 or something, 16 millimeters, so there's some distortion that just makes them appear not as they are, so to speak. Um, I'll fix that in, in Photoshop. Yeah. The do you do Sorry, go ahead. What, are you going to ask if I do plugins? Uh, black and white. I was going to ask about your, I saw you had some black and white. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love black and white, um, especially coming from an analog background. Black and white is my, my core. Um, I'm kind of upset because uh, Nick software was bought by Google, and Google's kind of, right. we're not, they're just not developing it anymore. Um, and their, their Silver FX Pro is, such a beautiful program to work on and does a really, really good job um, rendering um, black and white tones and my favorite Ilford, you know, profile uh, yeah. <laughs> photos. Have you tried Mac Fun's tonality, Lisa? I have not. I, I'm it's kind of in this weird limbo of going, okay, I know I need to find something new, but I just love morning. it so You're much. I'm in a period of mourning, yes. <laughs> For real. Allowed. That's allowed. <laughs> and such is the nature. Especially now that they've like announced, like they've made it they've made it official <laughs> that they're not supporting it anymore. It, it, it's yeah. It's really sad. It's and Mac really Fun sad. is starting to make Windows versions, so you know they're serious. They're That's right. <sighs> That's right. Well, and interestingly, so the guy, you know, our friend Kevin LaRue, who works at Mac Fun in the uh -huh. US used to run Nick software in the oh, US okay. as well. All right. Yeah. Yeah, There's they've got a few so. they've got a few Nick people on the Mac Fun. Yeah. 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 I have I've earmarked that as um and I I think I'm going to look into it at the end of this season and and play around with that stuff. Um I don't like to switch software in the middle of busy season. Right. Um yeah, because that just slows down your workflow. Pro, pro tip. <laughs> Don't switch. In fact, Cecil, Cecil and Thomas were just discussing in the chat about how, like Cecil says, whoa, four weeks and no complaints? In Orlando, they want a quicker turnaround. And Thomas said, well, I thought four weeks was pretty standard. So in D.C., where I'm from. I mean, like six months used to be standard. You know, like a year. Like In D.C., where I'm from, um, honestly, a lot of people are six to eight weeks. Yeah. Um, well, I find, like, when people ask me, they're like, holy cow, how do you do three to four weeks? And I'm like, right. That's what I was thinking. How do you do any longer? Weeks, like, like it, wow. it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> maybe maybe some yeah. people are afraid of, it's not the, it's the, what, the marriage isn't going to last, so they want to make sure. That <laughs> I mean, it's in my contract. Um, clients know about it ahead of time. It's always a topic that comes up when they first um, is preface it with, I always try to get it faster. If I get it done faster. You know, if it's the only wedding I have in the first half of that month, there's no reason why I can't get it done in a week. Yeah. But um, most of the time, that's not the case. Um, I do deal with, like, planners and florists and all the other vendors email me going, where are the photos? Right. And because right. they're expecting free marketing well, photos so they can wait until they you anything for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy to share, but the client gets the photos first. Right. Um, that's, oh, that's good. That's a lot good. of times, if I can, I will do a preview blog post, usually somewhere around the end of week two, um, mm -hmm. and send that to the client first and post that up on so that they have a little bit of a teaser of, of some of the, the best of the best. Yeah. Um, but do you have a general number? of how many total photos you would deliver? Like, is there a, is there a normal average or is it all over the place? Or? It usually averages out for me to about 80 images an hour, um, maybe 100. So in a seven to eight hour wedding, I'll give out anywhere between high 600s to like high 700s of images. Okay. Um, Obviously, that's not actually 100 images an hour, literally, but um, yeah. between in the pre-wedding and everything, it averages out to about that I for see. me. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, do you? Now, I think you said that you make the albums yourself too. Do you d design the albums and then? I do design and make the albums. I use the Fundy software for that. Um, to make them just, just through like Adobe and stuff like that. And um, I yeah. don't know. I, once I figured out the Fundy workflow, I was like, oh my God, I can make an album in like 20 minutes. <laughs> it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So you just um, export, you export out of Lightroom and then you bring it into that? So yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, I'll make another folder for within that client's overarching folder. They'll have album pick. I give my clients the option of picking what photos they want for the album. Yeah. Um, half of them want to pick them, the other half are too overwhelmed and they're like, you do it. Um, so I'll make it in Fundy, I'll export it, and then I use um, albumexposure.com um, to for previews. So it'll construct like an online digital version of the album mm -hmm. that the client can go through and make comments on each spread and note comments on pictures if they want to swap one or um, move it to a different location, but client gets ultimate approval before that gets. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Good. And that yeah, makes it very cool. easy too. Yeah. And By the way, next month we're doing a broadcast with Fundy. Uh, Yay! To talk about with Andrew. See how this stuff works. Yeah, like Fundy will be on with me, and we'll. Uh, yeah. If you'd like to join me, Lisa, that'd be fun. <laughs> I'd love to. They're good people. Yeah, yeah. And, and interestingly, they they have integrated perfectly clear into. Fundy as well, so that's cool. Huh. Oh, okay. So, like on the imp uh, on the import into that software, you can tweak your photos. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, within Fundy, once you've once you've built your album, is that you what, can say, like, oh, this one needs some. This, yeah, like this one needs some portrait retouching. What they're doing now. Oh, I yeah, like it. It's it's not the full like it doesn't launch you into the full thing, but it's uh, it's got several smart functions already included. Okay. So that's, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Partnership. In speaking of perfectly clear, Rob. Yes. We got so hey, we got about ten minutes, a little less than ten minutes left. Uh, if you'd like to get entered in to win a perfectly clear complete, is it the whole thing? It's the whole thing. Oh, good. The whole, the whole thing. thing's good. Um, yeah. Although my favorite thing in there that saves me so much time, um, the eyes. Yeah, eyes, right? The eyes are incredible. Yeah, the under eye circle thing and the eye brightening, like it does such a good job and so realistically. Yeah, saves me so much time. Yeah. Now, do clients generally ask for retouching as part of the contract originally? Like, well, that that goes along with Robin's question right now. She's uh, he's, he's uh -huh. asking. You mentioned that you only use PS when you have to for blemish and liquify. What's your average percentage of how many photos require Photoshop for a wedding? Or is Photoshop specific for wedding portrait shots? Maybe 10 to 15% require Photoshop. Um, yeah. The rest is just all in Lightroom or maybe throwing into a plugin, like I was saying with the Nick Silver FX Pro um, that I'm mourning. <laughs> <laughs> or um, going into perfectly clear when there's like obvious under eye circles. And it, it's such a quick little thing that you can do that makes the photo look a thousand times better and the, the person in the photo look a thousand times better. Yeah. Um, every in my contract, I include um, basic retouching, which I define as um, straight hairs and things. Um, mm. When it gets into like oh, straight hairs, do that's like that's major retouching to me. Because if I have to launch Photoshop, most, that's major retouching. <laughs> <laughs> well, most stray hair things, um, honestly, are, are with like a bride's hairstyle. Um, and yeah. those are really, very rarely do they become complicated for me. And when they become complicated, I, I, send, it to, I send it to retouchup.com and I'm done with it. It's <laughs> kind of honest, nice. whatever. Okay. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but um, I, 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 I don't like nickel and diming my clients, so I do include that basic retouching. Yeah, um, right. If they come back to me with like a laundry list of craziness, um, I start the discussion that this is above and beyond what we discussed in our contract and I'm happy to do it and here's what the rate will be um, and what the turnaround time on it would be. Right. Um, but it doesn't happen very often. It's once every four years or so, three or four yeah. years that I get that's a client that's super picky about things. I, I just recently had one where she 
sent me a huge list about blemishes, and I'm I'm zoomed in past 100. percent I'm like, I see no blemish. What are you talking about? No clue. Um, Print so on canvas. For, for more clarification on on the issue, but it's so rare. I had a huge policy in place for it. Yeah, it just um, it's one of those things. Yeah, I just was wondering because with Photoshop being such a prevalent part of uh, pop culture that people almost you know expect that everything's going to look like. Uh, well, here's the thing: is they think nightmare. they need Photoshop because of the crappy photos they take. Ah, but there you go. <laughs> when you're a professional <laughs> <laughs> and you That's know it. how to pose people, you eliminate like ninety percent huh. of the need for Photoshop. That oh yeah, well if you use a nice camera, person. then that's right. like all it's going to take. It's, you just didn't buy the most expensive camera. That's the I have a really nice camera. It does really good stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're being facetious here, folks. Yes. yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, so as we're we're kind of coming towards the end, is there like can you think of like one of like the most important things you could pass on to someone who's maybe either just getting started or maybe has been doing it for a while, but like a like a thing you you know, like I have like lightroom things I I want everybody to know. Like is there like a wedding thing? Honestly for me and, and we haven't actually touched on this yet and I wanted to this aspect of things I think is hugely important and often gets overlooked and you know, in, in exchange for Photoshop skills or Lightroom skills, which are, yes, very helpful. Um, but if you don't have your business stuff squared away, yeah. and all over the place and frazzled. So find whatever works for you. Um, I, some people are very old school and like hang out. I've got a um, dry erase board that has all of my weddings for a year and has a column for each step of my um of my workflow that i sat down and i determined okay how do i want to workflow my weddings and what order do i want to do that um there are online programs like um, honeybook or 17 hats or shoot q that are all also like really great sources of Clients, your workflow, you can see at a glance where you're at with a certain client. When you're managing 30 plus clients a year, everybody's at a different spot with different things. Um, so it can get really overwhelming to kind of keep track of that stuff and to know, okay, this is here, this is my 100% priority today. I got it, I have to do that. Um, I, I have a shoot queue um, account that I'm kind of playing around with right now seeing if it's a good solution for me they all have their bonuses and their week around and see which one customizes right for you um, and how you want to do your workflow because it's a very personal thing I think um, yeah there's not really a one solution I think like Lightroom that pretty much fits, fits everybody um, when it comes to business workflow but by all means find a workflow stick to it whatever system works for you is a big deal yeah no, that's okay. awesome and that's that's something that's always impressed me about lisa is her organization and <laughs> and and the business side of things that just you run like a business and a lot of times i feel like i run like a carnival, <laughs> you <run a> carnival. <laughs> <laughs> like compared, yeah, like compared to Lisa, I'm like, I'm like the guy spinning plates, and let's just hope you're not that guy. Over, you're not that plate over there. Like Lisa has. But you uh, remember every name of every face true. you've ever met, which so. is which is no small thing. <laughs> I don't. I can't do that. I, oh, I stink at that. Yeah, yeah no, that's, like, which is why I write everything down. Like in my intake meetings, like I've got down like yeah. parents' names, and oh, they mentioned Aunt So and So is coming from Finland. That way, yeah. what? When I have my final meeting with them, I'm like, oh, is your aunt still coming from Finland? And they're like, oh my gosh, she's like amazing. She remembers everything. That's yeah. good. I don't. It's all hey, like Incidentally, <laughs> I, I share my office with a company called Design a Glow, and they make oh, tools yeah. they're great. specifically for photographers to help with the business side of things. And they yes. like like the whiteboard. I mean, they have a what you can buy their whiteboard that's got the columns on it. You and the, oh, and cool. you buy their planner that's got the scheduling and, and helps you keep on top of all the workflow things. And uh, and so there's 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 tools out there to help. There are a lot um, of tools, especially in, in wedding photography. There's a lot of tools. Yeah. There's in a lot of tools, and you just got to. Yeah. 
Uh, Salman wants to know what is the ideal lens in your bag? Which lens do you use most? I want to know which lens is your most profitable. <laughs> most profitable? My 1645. Yeah. Really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. well, especially you saw more, more portrait, like more prints off that? Grand, big, epic, especially with uh, my shoots out here in Colorado. I mean, that's a yeah. big thing for people out here is incorporating yeah. this amazing space that they're in. Um, and that, those are wall art pictures. You know, people yeah. don't want a big wall art picture of like their portrait here. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what, like, they I want this like, I do. epic yeah. thing, yeah. you know, a little tiny in there. Yeah. I mean, that's a moneymaker lens for sure. Yeah. Like that's a portrait that'll hang on the wall for the rest of their lives. Yep. Whereas otherwise the, the big wedding portrait ends up replaced by the family portrait. Right. But the landscape so, stays up forever. Yeah. For, and then the other one is my 85 millimeter. Yeah. Um, right I mean, that's a great portrait. And it's also great for, for selling. Cause those are, that's what people are going to put in an album. It's what people are going to give to grandma. It's what they're going to give to, um, you know, their parents. Do you feel like you can make a living with those two? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I, my, I really only ever use my 16 to 35, my 35 prime when I really want that nice creamy bokeh and stuff. Mm. Mm. Um, and my 85. Um, I pull out my ceremonies only time I use it. Wait, sorry, let's say that again. We lost you on that. Oh, I pretty much only use my 70 to 200 during ceremonies. Oh, okay. You, you have not mentioned 24 to 70. No. Yeah, me neither. I'm not a 24 to 70. I don't 70 love guy. it. I've owned it like four times and I sell it every time because it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's not my view. Yeah. I know people love it. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen people right. with it, but it, it just, the other lenses work better for me. So. Yeah, I'm super wide or super tight. And, That's and, they're, light, and they're lighter. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's and they're too, way it's lighter. Mid -range. Yes. It, it just, it, it's never quite long enough and it's never quite wide enough it's for me. Interesting. It's not wide enough so. to be super impressive and it's not tight enough to be flattering. So. Yeah. Right. Photographers that love their fifties or and I, I never touch my fifty. Never. I think that's because they don't have an eighty-five or a one hundred. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got a one hundred five. I love. I do like my fifty because it's so light. I just throw that Where's on, that? and I wouldn't do a, shoot a wedding with it necessarily, but just yeah. walking around, I love the fifty. Uh, yeah. for that. Sometimes I use the fifty for as a wide angle for group portraits <laughs> when yeah. I have to take off the eighty-five. <laughs> Yeah, well, my I mean. 85 that I have is is not the super um, and I love it. It's like yeah, a quarter of the weight. Too, right? You're not using no. the, the baseball, no, the, that morning. softball mounts to the front of the cannon lenses. Yeah, it's yeah. just huge. It's heavy. It's <laughs> awful. Yeah. You know, when you're hauling that thing around for nine, ten hours in a day, and yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's also a main reason why I don't use 7200. It, it just breaks me. Um, yeah. I used to use it all the time, and then I realized that I was using it more length than at the full 200 most mm -hmm. of it um so i just switched to the 85 so unless i need to bring a scenery for a picture in mm -hmm. with that zoom at 200 or i need to be looking way down the aisle at a, at a wedding where the church ladies only let me like behind <laughs> the like 50th row of people yeah, uh, right. <laughs> and this is a good this is a good use of lightroom so if you are you know is wondering what you're shooting at you can in oh, yeah, view, yeah. library filter, you can look and under um, focal Search length and see lens, what focal you're shooting. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you can carry like the 135 and the 85 and still be lighter than the, the 70 to 200, I think. No, I'm 85, 35 most of the day. I have my um, shoot sack on me that has the mm -hmm. um, the 16 to 35 and, or, and then we're good. So I leave the 70 to 200 in my think tank Station somewhere safe at the venue, and then I go go grab it when I need to. So. Yeah, right on. Need to work out into some curls. Can you do that out. one more time? I didn't. Have to <laughs> you like you, can, you, can, it. you can watch the video. Um, <laughs> hey, we're at the end of our time. We are. Yeah, it's you been a good one. Pull some names out of your hat. Uh, <laughs> I've got two names. Are they in your hat, Levi? Yes. It, oh, wait, they're in my hat. In that hat. I've That's got. How, Robin Fong and Salman Shah as our winners. All right, so awesome. as as the winners of the Perfect Care plugin, there's two things you have to do. First is chime back in the live chat to let us know you're still listening because you have to be still here uh, to to claim your prize. Uh oh, you didn't and, say that earlier. 
That's right. Oh, uh, Sharon's still here. Does Sharon says, thank you. Don't shine out yet. Don't don't shine out yet, Sarin. Yeah. Don't sign out yet, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so Robin is Robin and who? Robin and Salmon. Oh, there's Robin. Robin's here. All right. So Hi, Salmon. Robin. You won. So uh, the second thing you have to do, like Robin chimed in, so wait for Salmon. So is to email Levi at photofocus.com. To let him know that you are the winner, and he will then email you back in four weeks. <laughs> What's your turnaround, Levi? Uh, it's 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 yeah, uh, Mister. I'm all over the place with plates, right? It's my um, it's my summertime resolution to yeah. uh, just get these things done more swiftly. But do give me some time. Don't uh, don't freak out if it's not there immediately after e after you email me. So that's yeah. Levi at photofocus.com. All right, so Robin's definitely here. Salman, are you here? We got. We have to turn on the countdown clock here. Levi has to reach oh, into his hat for the, my my random name generator <laughs> for his third alternate. Don't be the third shooter. Good. And while we're waiting for Salman, one more time there, Lisa, where can we catch up with you? Where can yes. we see your latest stuff? And where can we? You can uh, follow me on my Instagram, which is at lovesomelisa. Or you can well, maybe not follow my blog. I'm not as good at blogging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better on putting stuff on the Instagram than, than uh, blogging. Although, that, like you said, Levi, I have a resolution for that. Um, it's been implemented into the workflow. It's a new column on my dry erase board and on my uh, online tools Excellent. For, Excellent. for doing that. So. Well, and you can also catch Lisa's excellent history of photography column each Sunday yes. morning on photofocus.com. It's really been intriguing and interesting to read that. You guys, you guys ought to check that out. Yeah. She's that gone fun. through all kinds of things about, um, about the, the progression of, of photography, both technically and artistically. It's yeah. really cool. I'm going to be using that in my uh, class. So I, I start um, teaching a college class tomorrow. Oh, awesome. oh nice. Uh, digital photography, and so I'm going to be. That'll be one of their assignments is reading those. Uh, oh snap! No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I was a double major with photography and um, art history, so right I on. thankfully, as the big nerd that I am, I saved a ton. So I've been pouring over those with yeah. um, finding article ideas and and kind of delving into sources and things for those articles and remembering all the stuff that I learned back then. It's it's fun. I, I think. Photography is a category of working. I, I don't know. It's a category that people don't uh, pay a lot of attention to the background and they, they just kind of right. jump right in without really knowing the foundation. And I think there's a lot of cool information to be learned there. And um, right. it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile. Like no, one, no one would start watercolor without having, you know, studied some, the, the genres and the techniques and the types and everything, but but you can absolutely pick up your camera from Costco and start making pictures, ignorant of the culture that you have just yeah. dived into. Yeah. Hey Levi, we need another name. Solomon did not like show. It. All right. Well, and it turns out it is Sharon Wingett. Sharon, are you not. still here? Sharon, are you still Sharon, in? Please. Uh, yeah, Robin, that's the right. Levi at photofocus.com. You got it. Yes. In uh, and four, Sharon, four to six weeks. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you got to do that better than that. For delivery. No, he, like, does. he does. Better. You'll do better okay, if you get, get a wedding uh, photographed out by Lisa. In four weeks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If Lisa you should be able to get them their email with their name. Oh, for... oh, good. Sharon's still in. Sharon's still in. <laughs> there you go, Sharon. Just email me, and I will send you a... Uh, this way he'll look good when he gets back like. in two weeks. Uh, you know, <laughs> exceed expectations. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, so Sharon. Yeah, let's always put that 46 weeks on. Email Levi at photofocus.com. Let him know that you won. All right. Rob, where can we catch you? Uh, well, where are you going to be next? Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, I'll be out in Colorado Springs. Uh, yeah. Uh, doing a Best Buy training event out there. And, uh and then, on, yeah, I start teaching in Concord, New Hampshire, at the New Hampshire Technical Institute uh, tomorrow. Back to back to school. Right on. Um, 
Right That's on. That's it. So how about you, Levi? Where can we see you? I, I just got home from a wonderful workshop in Montana, and I think we should do it again, and I think you guys should come. I definitely uh, I love, my, love Montana. I, I love my time. Yes, yeah, it, it was it was so One of my wonderful. We were, places. Yeah, the Lee Metcalf Wilderness, and we had wildlife, and we had stars, and we had eclipses. Now I don't know if I can arrange an eclipse for next year. I'm working on it. Try it, but um, probably not in Montana. Yeah, but if anyone could, you could. <laughs> yeah. And the, where else? Oh, uh, PPE is coming up. I'm headed up there. Are you going to be there, Rob? In uh, New York. In New York. Yeah, I'd like to. I, I plan it. I'm, um, it's on my calendar. I haven't made any specific plans, but uh, that's a re pretty relatively easy for easy one for me to get to. So, well, good. L yeah, look for us for a photo walk. Yeah, in uh, October in New York, that'll be a lot of fun. Oh, very good. So, all right, guys. You uh, Lisa? I, I was just trying to think of what dates that was, and I was like, oh, I think I'm out of the country that date. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's towards the end of October. Yeah. I'm going to be doing Northern Lights photography up in Finland. So, oh, wonderful! Oh, Let's go there instead. C come on out. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to be in glass igloos and doing all kinds of cool stuff. Glass igloos. Wow. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hang on. Let's hang on Lisa's uh, Instagram. <laughs> I don't know about internet connection to do one of these things from there or not, but <laughs> yeah, you'll have yeah. Being don't up at the that. Arctic Circle. <laughs> just just look up. Yeah. Oh, don't don't worry about us. Yeah. Well that sounds awesome. Good. All right. Well guys, uh thank you. Thanks for everyone who tuned in and is still hanging thank in there with you. us. Uh, thank you, Lisa, so much for sharing all that with us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Thanks for, for having that. me. Um, check out all all of Lisa's stuff and Levi's stuff and even some of my stuff on photofocus.com. There's a bunch of stuff up there. And, and all of these. Right. So now this will immediately join the archive of, of everything on Photofocus. It's amazing. Good deal. All right. So September is around the corner. I guess yep. we'll be back again very soon. Uh, Sounds like yeah. fall leaves time. Yeah. Yay. Not, not started here yet. So. Soon. Oh, man. Right. Up in Montana, there were orange aspens already. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got some orange or aspens just starting to turn yellow out here. Yeah, so. we had icicles one morning. Nice. It was, it was so oh, fun. Sir. I'm I, so looking forward to fall. <laughs> higher elevations. All right, well, it'll be here. Living All right, guys. <laughs> All right. Take, take good care. Good Thank luck, you. Lisa. Thank you. All right. Good to see you.